We want for our patients uh, to uh, uh, increase their survival, their chances for cure, and also with quality of life. And uh, we have now uh, um, some uh, drugs that uh, have demonstrated uh, after, beyond second line, an increase, a significant increase in uh, efficacy in all terms, in response rate, progression-free survival and survival. And uh, on top of that, if the patient has not been previously treated with an anti-GFR, the monotherapy with anti-GFR is also an option. But uh, uh, as well as the efficacy similar with uh, 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 trifluoridine tipiracil, uh, which is one of the drugs, and uh, regorafenib, which is the other, uh, the uh, mechanism of action is completely different, as well as the toxicity profile. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, myeloid toxicity. It's uh, uh, neuro, uh, uh, neutropenia mainly, uh, the dose-limiting toxicity, and the other one, uh, regorafenib, is uh, uh, going to show uh, fatigue and hand foot syndrome. So we have to select patients based on the intention of our treatment, based on uh, their previous toxicity showed at the uh, first and second line treatments. For instance, if uh, the patient develop a huge hand foot syndrome with an anti-GFR, we would prefer not to repeat this type of toxicity and choose another option. Uh, the uh, uh, mm, uh, performance status of the patient is also important. So a patient who is in good performance status could tolerate very well uh, a drug that uh, causes fatigue. But if the patient is, is not in good shape, it's, it's in PS2, fatigue could be too much uh, to handle. So based on that uh, assumptions, the uh, election of uh, that uh, say, uh, third and fourth line treatment is an option that benefits our patients because uh, it uh, increases the uh, uh, length of survival with good quality of life. And that's important.